Hi, everybody. My name is James Gondak, and this is my son. Bennett. We're coming to you live from our home in this time of social distancing. Uh, we wanted to, or I wanted to give you some information uh, about picking your classes for next year as you start the PVA program. Uh, I, so in order to do that, I've created a short presentation here uh, to walk you through some general information about Broadneck High School and then picking your classes at Broadneck. I know that many of you have probably already chosen your courses, um, but as your school counselor for the next four years, I want you to know that after this presentation, if you want to reach out to me or uh, have a discussion about the courses that you chose, uh, to please feel free to email me. My email is on uh, this first slide here, and uh, I'm available Monday through Friday uh, pretty much any time. And if you'd like to email back and forth or call, um, we can certainly facilitate that. But I want to say congratulations. Welcome to Broadneck. You've made an excellent choice in accepting your uh, seat in the PVA program. So as I mentioned before, not only have you chosen a great program in the PVA magnet program, you've chosen a great high school. There are about 22 to 2300 students at Broadneck High School, so we're a relatively large school. But one of the great things about it being a large school is we have a ton of clubs and activities going on here. Uh, I encourage everyone to go to broadneck.org and in the students tab you'll see all the clubs and activities that we offer. Uh, there are over 50 clubs and activities all available to you. Um, I encourage you guys to really get involved beyond the PVA program. You guys will be spending a lot of time with your PVA friends uh, and I think it's really a, a good thing for you to branch out and explore all that Broadneck has. Next, let's talk about our schedule at Broadneck High School. Our school day starts at 7.30 and ends at 2.18. What I'm addressing here is not the extended day part of your PVA program, just your typical school day. So you can see we operate on an A day, B day schedule, which should be similar to your middle school schedule. The one big difference is instead of six periods, at Broadneck, you're only gonna have four classes or periods in a day. The other thing that may be different is that we have Bruin Block at the high school. Our Bruin Block is two 35-minute periods where our students eat lunch, get extra help, make up tests, or participate in clubs. It's really important for parents to understand that this is a very unstructured time, and many of our ninth graders need a lot of extra help and support in terms of helping them figure out where to go and who to access. It is real easy for our ninth graders to follow the path of hanging out with their friends instead of getting out extra help in the classes that they need extra help in. So I ask uh, that parents in particular uh, monitor grades, monitor how kids are doing in their classes, and help their PVA students use their time wisely. I also suggest that students use this Bruin block if they're doing well in their classes to do their homework because many of our PVA students will have extended day schedules during the week and if you can finish all your homework uh, when you get home in the evening it'll be later but if you're done all your homework then you can just relax. Next, I'd briefly like to cover graduation requirements. All students in Anne Arundel County have to meet a minimum of 26 credits in order to graduate. As a PVA student, you're going to have way more than 26 credits. But the core classes that everyone in the county must complete are four years or four credits of English, the three specific social studies courses that you can see on the screen, four credits in mathematics, now, mathematics is a little funny because even if you took a credited math class in middle school, such as Algebra 1, all students have to take math every year of high school. OK, so even though you'll have your four credits by your junior year, if you took Algebra 1 in eighth grade, as a senior, you still must be enrolled in a math course. Students then have to take three years or three credits of a science. Everyone has to take one credit of phys ed, and you can see that one of those classes has to be fitness for life. The other class can be any other gym class that you'd like to take. 
All students have to take half a year or half a credit of health, a basic technology, a fine arts class, which as a PVA student, you will have plenty, a class called Global Citizenship, and eight elective courses. This year, students in the PVA program took their Global Citizenship class as an after-school course at Studio 39, and it's my impression for you guys, it will be the same situation. So for one third of the year, you will go to Studio 39 to take Global Citizenship, and Mr. Dombowski will cover the specifics of that at a later date. There are a few other things that we need to complete in order to graduate from high school. The first is to be a completer or have a pathway to graduation. Students who are in the PVA program are by default college completers. The reason being part of your requirements for PVA are you have to take three years of a world and classical language. And you can see the college completer requires two things. First, you have to take up to or beyond Algebra 2 for your math class. Then you have to take at least two years of the same foreign language. These two things make you a college completer. The next thing we want to look at are your state mandated tests. You have to pass your math, English, science, and social studies exams. Most of you will take math in either eighth or ninth grade. At that time, you will take the math park exam. When you enroll in English 10, you'll take the Park English exam. In your second year of science, whether it's biology or honors chemistry, you'll take what we call the MISA test. And then in social studies, when you take US government in 10th grade, you'll take the government HSA. And you must pass those tests in order to graduate. The last piece of the puzzle is your 75 hours of service learning. This is taken care of in-house. It is these service learning hours are built into the curriculum of classes. So I do not need students to go out beyond the school day to do service learning. Now we'll talk in subsequent years that doing uh, extra community service or extra um, service learning is good for colleges and good for, uh, sir, uh, excuse me, good for um, scholarships. Uh, in order to graduate, for graduation purposes, I do not need this information. Before we look at the specific courses that are available to you as a ninth grade PVA student, I want to give you my theory and my background about academic course selection. I believe that success as a student, any student, needs to be taken uh, with a holistic view. We are more than just a student in one class. We take eight classes in a school day. Many of us have activities after school that we participate in. And now you guys are taking on the added um, rigor of the PVA program. So first, your PVA program is alone an honors and AP program. Okay, you will be taking honors courses throughout the PVA program. In fact, just about every course you take will be listed as an honors course. In your 11th grade year, you're going to take AP Music Theory. In addition to those classes, you'll have your after school lessons, a potentially long bus ride. Um, you'll be doing then everything else you do at home, your chores, your mowing the lawn, your baseball, your basketball, any other activities, Boy Scouts, babysitting. So I think we need to look at the whole picture. What is your ninth grade year going to look like? It is important that ninth grade be a successful transition. It gets you off on the right foot as far as life after high school. So we want you to choose the correct classes that are right for you. We want you to maintain balance and we want you to get involved. I don't want you just to come to school and then to go home. Okay, I want you to be get I want you to get socially involved at the programs and activities that we have here at the high school. Please hear me when I say you do not have to take all honors and AP classes in order to be successful at Broadneck. Broadneck is a school that can be very rigorous. And I think as a ninth grade transition, especially if you haven't been in our feeder system, it's important for you to look at the courses that you enjoy and to reach in the courses you enjoy, but also 
to maybe not reach in the classes that you don't necessarily enjoy. Last week, the Magnet Office provided a link for you guys to pick your courses. I wanted to provide a little bit of context as it relates to your choices for next year's classes. Let's start with the English department. In the English department, you can choose between Standard English 9 and Honors English 9. Honors English 9, and in general, any honors class is going to be more rigorous, provide more reading, more writing, and just be a little bit harder. In particular, I want you to be careful with our honors department because our honors English department loves English. In most honors English classes, you will be reading two books at the same time, one in class and one outside of class, and be required to do assignments on both of them. In the social studies department, you have three choices, standard U.S. history, honors U.S. history, and AP U.S. history. As a general rule, I'm not a fan of students in ninth grade taking AP U.S. history. Each year we have maybe roughly 30 students in our class of somewhere between 550 and 600 students take AP, so you'll see that not that many kids take the course. If you do choose to take AP U.S. history, know that this is a class that is taught at the college level and will require college level reading and writing. It will also count as two of your classes, meaning as a PVA student, you won't have the opportunity or ability to take a PE class this year. You have two choices for science. Most students will take environmental science. The other students will take honors biology. Both are fine and will prep you for the MISA test that you'll take in 10th grade. Students who take honors biology will then, as a 10th grader, go on to honors chemistry. Students in environmental science in 10th grade will go on and take biology. Now, if you end up taking honors biology and you decide that honors chemistry is not right for you, please know that as a 10th grader, you will have to go back to take environmental science as these are the courses that will prepare you to take that MISA exam. In our math department, as we discussed earlier, if you took Algebra 1 in 8th grade, you'll be taking Geometry, and you have a choice between Standard Geometry and Honors Geometry. If you didn't take Algebra 1 in 8th grade, you will have a choice between Algebra 1 every other day and a daily Algebra 1 course. Now, if math is not your strong suit or you're not that great with math, the daily Algebra 1 may be for you. If you feel as though you're adequate at math or you're very strong in math, then Algebra 1 every other day is a fine course for you. Again, pick the course that meets your ability and your interest level in the department. Our last two course selections are your World and Classical Language and your Phys Ed. For those of you who are in a level one or level two of a foreign language, we would ask that you would would choose the next level of the specific foreign language you are in. So for example, if you are in French 1 this year, we want you to choose French 2. If we need to make modifications later in the summer, we certainly can do that. If you happen to be in a foreign language that we do not offer here at Broadneck, such as Italian, we just ask that you pick a new foreign language. You can see that we offer French, Spanish, and sign language. In our physical education department, students all have to take fitness for life. So please choose fitness for life. After that, please feel free to look at the course, the courses that we offer and make a choice um, as far as what interests you. A few examples, team sports is your general PE class, and then we offer specific courses. So if you just want to do lacrosse, baseball, football, basketball, soccer, feel free. That's what you'll play all semester. We also offer weight training class and a women's only strength and conditioning class. If gym is not your thing, we offer a class called walking for wellness where you just walk. And we have a dance class where you can learn to dance. Lastly, we have lifetime sports. Lifetime sports is a, a PE class where you engage in activities that you can do throughout the lifetime, such as tennis, golf, frisbee, 
this past year, Miss Yateman, the, the fit, lifetime sports teacher, took the students paddle boarding. Okay, everyone, I hope that that was informative and it maybe answered a few of your questions or gave you at least some context to uh, what you were doing when you picked your courses. Um, I do want to say welcome to the class of 2025. Uh, again, you made a great choice in coming to Broadneck in the PVA program. I hope that you have a great rest of your eighth grade year and look forward to meeting you guys soon. Uh, I do know in the coming weeks, I believe we will be meeting each other virtually and Mr. Dombowski will cover more specific detail about the PVA program and what that entails. Um, also know that as we move into the summer and into the start of next school year, you guys are going to have plenty of uh, opportunity to come to school, to tour the building, see where your classes are. Um, and then in the last kind of culmination is in ninth grade only day, that first day of school where we'll have an orientation day, have a lot of fun, uh, get you acclimated to Broadneck High School. Um, if you have, again, any questions, feel free to reach out. Look forward to meeting you guys and uh, enjoy the rest of this school year and summer.